How reliable are products from AliExpress? That's like saying, how reliable are things that I buy in the world, <laughs> right? How reliable is food that I buy from a store? Well, I don't know. Did you buy it from a three Michelin star restaurant? Did you buy it from a grocery store? Did you buy it from a, 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 a vendor giving you expired meat out of a cooler on the side of the road? AliExpress is a humongous marketplace with everything from top tier to absolute crap. You, you, you have to just know what you're buying and who you're buying it from. And it's always a bit of a crapshoot, but a lot of people feel that they get good value and that they get what they expect. There's no way to generalize that, though. I will say I've seen a lot of Western people assume that AliExpress is somewhere you're buying from. Uh, and right. it's not the case. You're buying from vendors, just like right. an Amazon, the foreign Amazon. Right. Well, but the difference so is the difference is that Amazon also is a, a, they have their own warehouses and they have fulfilled by Amazon. So you are, in fact, buying from Amazon some of the time. Whereas with AliExpress, I don't know if that's true. Yes. No. I don't I don't know if that's true or not. I've never yeah. purchased there. I think I think with AliExpress you're always buying from a vendor. You're, uh, that AliExpress is just they're they're the flea market that people set tables up in, but they don't actually have a table of their own. I guess. So it's a bit of a crapshoot, but you're not buying from AliExpress, as Blunty points out. You're buying from an individual store, and your experience will depend on that store and the product the store is selling. It, it absolutely is sometimes the case that. Products on AliExpress are counterfeit. Now, it's it's not going back to what I said about maybe Madstech sometimes blowing things out of proportion. It's not frequent, but like there was an incident where some Rush tank solo VTXs, and it's not like it was a a, a Rosh Tonk duo. That's it wasn't like just some Chinese clone. It was labeled as a Rush tank solo, and it was not made by Rush. And Rush put out a statement saying these are fake. Don't buy them. And likewise, Maytech has made a statement about the um, H743, saying if you bought an H743 from AliExpress, it probably was a was a, a counterfeit. So it's a it's a little bit of the wild west, but you know, people some people like buying from. What charger do you use for ADES? asks Flexo3D. There are two chargers I would have you look at today for ADES. They're not the only ones, but they're, they're, these are the two that sort of stand out to me. And one is the ISDT Air 8. That's the one I actually use. Uh, it's 60 bucks, So it's a really inexpensive ADES charger. And it's ISDT, so it's fairly good quality. It's a single channel charger. 500 watts, 20 amps, doesn't have an AC adapter. You need a, you need a DC power supply. So it's not going to be for everybody. But for 60 bucks, you can charge ADS batteries. Voila. Um, the other one is, uh, I think Hoda just released one. Is it the T8? Yes, it is. The Hoda T8. And this one is also 60 bucks. It is a, is it a two channel charger? No, no, it's a single channel charger. 650 watts, 22 amps, so slightly better specs than the ISDT. Hoda, also a very reputable brand. I don't know that there's a lot to differentiate these guys other than the form factor. What's this here? Has it got a servo checker? Servo tester? I don't know what that output is. That's interesting. Is it a temperature sensor, maybe? Interesting. I don't know what that is. Um, but uh, both of them are an 8S charger for, oh, it's got a 5 volt, 5 volt, 1 amp. Who cares? 5 volt, 2.1 amps. I guess it's useful for something, but. Oh, nice integrated power supply. That's nice. The Hoda, you can get an integrated power supply instead of a third party power supply. That's clever. Spend a little money. The multifunction port doesn't say what that is. So so either of those is a good choice. The ISDT Air 8 is the one I use because the Hoda didn't exist at the time. Today I might buy the Hoda, but uh, that's what I would point you towards. We'll start with this question from Levi FPV, who says, My solder joints keep forming peaks, even though I use a lot of flux and don't hold the iron on for too long. Any tips? I have to say, uh, uh, so using flux, good, right? 
Don't use too much flux. You say I use a lot of flux. Excessive flux can cause uh, issues. You should be using no clean flux. So normal solder flux is acidic, and if left on the board, over time can cause degradation or damage. I'm not sure to what degree, like how long and how much, I don't know. But the, the rule of thumb is, the standard practice is that after using flux, you get a toothbrush or a soft bristled nylon brush with uh, alcohol on it, and you scrub it and you rinse off the flux. If you use no clean flux, it is non-acidic and you don't have to clean it. Yay. That's, of course, that's what I do because I'm lazy. Uh, but if you, the flux is slightly conductive of electricity. So if you leave like a huge amount of flux on the board, you just glob it on, especially something like an ESC with, with full battery voltage on it. And then you plug in, psh, the flux can create a short circuit and burn off. And sometimes it's harmless and sometimes it's not. So don't go hog wild on the flux, but you need some, but you don't need a ton. Um, but I think what you might be doing is holding the iron on not long enough, okay? And what I mean by that is that the, the solder will attempt to stay with the thing that's hot, okay? So if you heat the wire, but you don't heat the pad underneath the wire, then the, the hottest thing in that interaction might be the soldering iron tip itself, because the wire may not hold much heat. And as you pull the iron away, the solder will try to stay on the iron. What you need is for the pad and the wire to get hot, so the solder kind of relaxes down into a ball, and then as you remove the iron, it stays stays there. Um, there are other things that could be causing the problem, that, but my guess, my, my number one guess might be that you're not getting the pad hot enough, either because you're not waiting long enough for the heat to transfer to the pad or because you're not physically contacting the pad. Especially with very small pads, it can be hard to kind of get the iron down and touch the pad and get the heat into the pad. So that's, that's some thoughts about that. Andrew Kennedy says, I'm currently building a quad. Everything is new out of the box. Uh, should I update the software before doing any configuration or what would you do? Um, I, I probably, would um, I, I would I would very I would very much like to make sure that everybody who buys a bind and fly drone, like a fully configured bind and fly drone from iFlight or GetRC, do not flash it when you get it. It came from the manufacturer, fully ready to go. If you flash it, you're going to wipe the config. It's going to be bad. Okay. So, but if you got a brand new flight controller with an old version of Betaflight on it, I'd probably update it. You got a brand new uh, uh, Radio Master Boxer, I'd probably update it to the latest version of Edge TX. And, a, and a, an Express Alerts receiver, I probably would. Here's the thing though, you don't have to. The only one of those that I would kind of insist on is Betaflight 4.5. If it comes with 4.4 on it, I would flash it to 4.5. There's really no reason not to do that. But the, the controller, the Express LRS, those are areas where if you're not like really comfortable doing that, you may frustrate yourself and get yourself in a bad situation where you flash the controller and then it doesn't work and you don't know why. And now you're super annoyed. And frankly, the advantages of updating your Edge TX from whatever it shipped with to the latest, the advantages of updating your Express Alerts receiver from whatever it shipped with to the latest are probably minimal. But the advantages of updating the flight controller to the latest beta flight is probably worth it. And the chances of screwing up a beta flight flash are relatively low. So that's my advice there.